Hi, and thank you for being here. Um, this is Maria Mandarino. I am going to be doing this episode by myself today, unfortunately. Uh, my friend Julie Jacobs of Windhorse Counseling um, lost her voice. So um, she's going to sit out a couple of episodes and then we'll, we'll probably be picking up with Enneagram Type 9 um, in the series about the Enneagram and parenting. So um, so today, again, we're going to be um, talking about Type 6. Before we jump in, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Um, your participation in the channel really makes a huge difference, and um, I appreciate it. So um, if you would please do that. Um, I will have links in the show notes um, for Julie's website, windhorsecounseling.com. If you've seen other episodes, you're familiar with her work. Um, so I'll have her contact information in there. Uh, my website, mariamandarino.com, among other things, I, I'm a licensed acupuncturist, I do Bach flower formulas, uh, spiritual direction in the Enneagram, uh, for the most part, and um, I do Enneagram typing. So if you're not sure of your Enneagram type, if you think you know, but you're just, you know, or if you have no clue at all, I do that, that work online with people. So um, you can sign up for that. Through the website um, if you're interested in doing spiritual direction with me which is more ongoing work usually we meet monthly for that type of work and most of the people i work with do know their enneagram type uh, but even if you don't um, spiritual direction you don't need to use the enneagram um, to be in spiritual direction so it's just a, a spiritual conversation um, it's said that spiritual direction was the piece that freud extracted from counseling making it more of a linear experience, um, taking out your relationship to your spirituality. So that's what we do in spiritual direction. So if you want more information about that, again, that'll be in the show notes, mariamandarino.com. I also now have a coffee account. Uh, if you want to contribute and support the channel, um, you can do that through, um, I believe it's ko fi dot com slash Maria Mandarino, but I'll definitely have the link in the um, in the show notes. I think that's what what the link is. Um, so you're you're welcome to do that, and, and your contributions would be appreciated. They would they would allow me to do more content and uh, also get some of the tech stuff um, you know, hire people to help me with the tech stuff. So um, until then, I am chief cook and bottle washer and learning as I go. So type six. Uh, we call type six the loyal skeptic. Um, in general, um, they seek uh, safety and security. These are things that they value um, highly. Um, they like to be prepared because in their view, when we're prepared, we enter into whatever the situation ahead might be feeling more safe and secured. So they're, they're preparers, they're great planners, um, and uh, they are also very loyal to people um, on their team or, you know, in this case, we're talking about parenting, um, the family unit, okay? Um, so loyal to, loyal to the family. Um, type six, we'll start with the high expression of type six, um, mentioned loyalty. Um, they're trustworthy, uh, intelligent and fair, devoted, faithful. They're fantastic problem solvers. Again, they're great planners, right? So when you plan, you can problem solve. Um, they're, they have a healthy level of inquisitiveness. Uh, if you ask questions, you can figure out a strategy. Um, and the goal of that strategy is to keep everyone safe, right? Um, and they're also pretty intuitive as they're kind of figuring out the plan and figuring out, you know, kind of what needs to be considered. They, they, there's a level of intuition that can come into it for, for a healthy type six. So as a parent, I, one of the images I get in the last episode, I talked about uh, threes and the high side of, of three is that father knows best Robert Young figure. If you know of that, that series, uh, TV series from, from the fifties. Um, but, um, I also think of Atticus Finch, um, in To Kill a Mockingbird. So, um, that even minded, you know, fair, loyal, the parent you can come to and have any level headed conversation with, and you're, and they feel safe 
to you. Um, they're kind of the stability of, of the family unit when, when healthy. Um, they invite the kind of relationship with the child where the child feels they can bring the parent anything, um, which um, if you're a parent, um, I will, I would say it's one of the greatest um, honors for you as a parent uh, to know that it speaks highly to your parenting skills. Let me put it that way. If your child feels that they can come to you with anything, right? Um, and if you lead with six and you're a healthy six, that's what you are going to draw from your child in, in, in the healthy state. So that said, um, most of the people I work with don't come to me in the healthy state, which is why they, why they seek me out. So this is the low side of how a six may present. Um, hung up on doubt. Skeptics easily triggered alarm systems, okay? And that has to do with fear. Um, type six gets a lock on fear like few types do. Um, I'd say a couple of, well, technically, there. I always say there's nine ways to do everything. So there's technically nine ways to do fear. But six has, a, a they have easy triggers when it comes to fear. Um, so fearful behavior, easily triggered alarm system. Um, the sky is falling down, chicken little and the sky is falling down for, for an unhealthy six, um, which then speaks to a lack of faith. We say the journey of six um, out of their low side into their high side is the journey of faith. Okay. So a lack of faith causes them to panic try to over control things, try to over plan everything, um, try to anticipate every disaster instead of just leaving room for grace. Um, tendency to want to figure it out. You'll hear them say that a lot. I just, if I could just figure it out and needing to figure it out means your faith has checked out um, and you are trying to step in and, and play play the god role um so um so yeah if you're a six doing that um that's something you want to check um sixes can be indecisive um and that that gets back to the fear um and an inability to figure it out it gets into the fear it gets into the lack of faith um so they can't decide. They, they're just, they, they feel like a wishbone. They feel split um, or about to be split. Uh, the fear can also look like paranoia for a six, for an unhealthy six. Um, for an unhealthy six, danger is everywhere. Where the healthy six wants to just plan for security and, and safety because those are valued things. The unhealthy six isn't thinking about, well, what do I have to do to just keep everybody safe? They're just assuming that everything is unsafe and everything is dangerous. It's They're coming from a whole other vibrational level. Um, they live in a state of anxiety, heightened anxiety. Uh, they live in a state of hypervigilance. Again, these are the unhealthy qualities. Um, and if you're six and you have a tendency to go off in any of these directions, um, I want to first point out that your Enneagram type is fully formed and was fully formed by the time you were 21. Your child, if they're under 21, their type's not fully formed yet. So pay attention. Pay attention to where as a six you learned that the world is an unsafe place because that's what you learned. That's what you absorbed. And again, your Enneagram type is formed and bear in mind that your child's Enneagram type is not formed yet. So this is where you get to have an influence. And not that you're trying to shape your child's Enneagram type, because I, I don't think you could do that if you wanted, if you tried. Um, but every little layer, every, every, every little piece, every layer um, has an effect. And I think that's, that's probably what I'm trying to say to you. 
Um, so if you're stuck in that danger is everywhere, you're paranoid about everything, you're terrified of everything, um, consider where that came from in your experience growing up, where those layers came in, that by the time you were 21, that's what had set within you. Um, and that's, you know, that's important work to do as a parent. Um, so if you find yourself being uh, one of those um, helicopter parent to an unhealthy extreme, um, not just hovering, um, but hovering in abject terror, that something horrible has to happen because something horrible always happens. And we always have to be, if we're not prepared for the horrible thing that we, you know, we're never going to be, well, how could we be safe? Right. Uh, if you find yourself doing that kind of thing, um, that's where some work needs to be done. And um, I would urge you to do that sooner than later. Um, so, um, so six um, in their, in their stress point, six will go so we have our nines and we have our threes, right? Um, six will go to nine when they're healthy. That's the line. We have that triangle in the middle, right? So six will go to nine when they're healthy and six will go to three when they're unhealthy. Um, so let's start with the three. An unhealthy six, I shouldn't say unhealthy, when they're stressed. It's the stress line, okay? So when a, when a six is stressed, they're going to take on the unhealthy characteristics of the performer or the achiever, the three. Um, success at all costs. Failure is not an option. Win at all costs. Dress for success. Um... It's the energy of deceit. It's images or image, putting on the mask, fooling whoever you have to fool to let everybody think you're the best or your family's the best. But more often than not, it starts with you. It's It starts with, with who you are. Um, so those would be some things to look, some some red flags to be looking for if you're a stressed out parent, if you find yourself doing the, I gotta be the best parent, or uh, if you start getting hung up on your job, your identity through your job, and that's how you're going to be a success while still you know, being the perfect parent as well, but you're really not showing up as a parent. You're, you're kind of you're physically there maybe, you're in the pictures, um, but you're not really there with your heart because your energy is going in a different direction. Um, pay attention. Those are those are some warning signs um, and places where you can redirect um, what you're doing. Um, and, you know, ultimately this whole series is about parenting and relationships and building your relationships with your kids. Um so pay attention if you're doing unhealthy three stuff. Um, the six, on the other hand, um, in a state of attainment and wanting to um, attain a goal in a healthy way, um, we call it the security line as opposed to the stress line, right? Um, highly developed six is going to look like a nine again we've got that three six nine triangle so those are the lines right uh, six is going to go to the nine um, in a place of strength um, place of wanting to attain a goal again so nine being the peacemaker the mediator so it, to me that's an extension of that healthy six that that will, can invite you into a conversation of fairness and um just being you know, present and um, loyal, um, having that open mind, uh, being able to see things from, from different positions, being that Atticus Finch, right? And then taking it across that line to the nine where um, let's say there's a little family squabble um, 
between siblings maybe or between your your partner and your child right that six becomes the mediator um and can merge with people and we're talking about healthy merging because next episode we're going to talk about the other side of nine uh with with what that can look like when it's unhealthy um but the six is retaining who they are and able to also step in and, and mediate and not form a judgment not take a side side see all sides um and bring people back together um creating calm, um, creating peace within within the family unit, right? Creating, I like to call that stability, right? Um, that uh, knowing that there's that person in the family unit that you can always turn to for um, consistency. I think, of, I think of six, a healthy six, as just being a constant. Um, we say sixes are great to have on a team. Uh, they keep the team, you know, there's a cohesiveness. They keep the team safe, first of all, right? And that's um, true of the, the family unit in this case, the safety, the desire to um, keep security, keep safety, um, take care of problems, um, not letting problems become bigger, right? Handle the problem when it's there, have a strategy, um, these are things that sixes do really well. So when they also go to the nine, again, they, they bring in that ability to mediate. It's like an ex it just becomes this extension of that healthy six energy. They mediate, they bring peace. They can calm everybody down. They can get everybody on the same page. Um, they're drama diffusers. <laughs> um, so... You know, and if there's like a sibling rivalry thing going on, or like I said, something between your partner and, and the child that's just, we need a third party who's subjective. That's that healthy six who can also go to that security line of the nine and, and pull out some of those nine qualities. So, um, so yeah. And as in the last episode, um, I want to mention concerns around unhealthy sixes. So a parent that's coming to me as an unhealthy six um, the red flags for me, um, are the fears that are kind of off the charts. Um, and they may be well-founded fears, but the fears have reached a frenzy, a panic. Okay. Um, and not to say that what's scaring you may not be legitimately scary. It's how you're now vibrating with the fear and is the fear running the bus or are you still in there um have you have you surrendered it all to your panic okay because if you surrendered it all to your panic and your panic leads and your panic enters the room before you do my my real concern there is how is that affecting your child um kids look to their parents for stability for safety, for security. They look for, and each of the Enneagram types is said to be a face, of, one of the faces of God, one of the nine faces of God. So all, all of you are, are facets of the divine, right? So the facet of the six is, is the face of the divine that makes us feel safe. Think about, think about that, okay? As a parent, think about that is the peace of God that you represent to your child you bring safety you bring security if you are entering the room with your panic all the time you're extracting that face of god from the child okay so that would be a concern that i would have and that would be a, something we'd explore um, in spiritual direction um, your loss of faith and what that because that's what that is that's what that panic is is your loss of faith and how that will affect a your relationship with your child and your child's relationship with divinity and that particular facet of divinity of feeling safe and secure um so that would be a concern um and just remembering um around that concern really it's, re it's really one concern that's as a six that's 
that's your goal is to be able to bring that is to be able to allow your child to count on you to feel safe um, to be the Atticus Finch, whether you're the, the dad or the mom. I mean, how many of us had that? Um, if you had a healthy six parent, you had it. Um, but yeah, do you want to risk extracting that foundation of safety under your child? And isn't it worth doing the work to make sure that that doesn't happen? And that your fear doesn't enter the room before you do. And that your fear isn't the thing that your child notices about you instead of noticing um, your, your higher self, your true essence, um, which is the loyalist um, that enters the room and makes everybody feel safe and protected. Um, so I think I'd like to end there for type six um, and parenting. Um, again, I regret that Julie Jacobs couldn't be here with us tonight. Um, Julie, if you're listening, I hope that your voice is healing. And uh, we will see you hopefully the next one for uh, Type 9. We'll pick up there together. Um, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, check out the links in the show notes. And I will see you guys next time, hopefully with Julie. Okay, thanks so much. And also, before I, before I sign off, um, if you would like to be on an upcoming episode to do some exploration with your Enneagram, if you know your Enneagram type and you are a parent and you want to do some sharing and a little bit of excavation in the, in the narrative tradition, I mean, it's not going to be a deep session, um, nothing that's like horribly revealing or anything like that. But um, if you're open to doing that, it's really the best way for people to see the energy of a type um, in action. Because I can speak to it as a spiritual director and an Enneagram practitioner, but I can only speak to my type. Um, and, and there are eight other types. So if we could interview people in an episode like this, and pretty much an episode exactly like this, and say, well, you know, how have you experienced this as a parent? Can you give us an example? How was this hard for you? Was this not hard for you? So that's really our, our hope with these episodes going forward. Um, so if that's something that you would like to um, to volunteer to do, uh, please drop me a note. Uh, you can do it through the comments, uh, through my website, however. All righty, thanks so much for being here. I wish you well, and I will see you next time with Julie. Okay, bye-bye.